Welcome to Metro 8 Sports Wrap. I'm your host, Ryan Young. MASW Transportation. I don't joke about it. That's how we got here. It's Saturday morning. It's raining. I'm all wet. Who says Metro 8 Sports Wrap isn't paying their dues? We got a great show. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. You're watching Metro 8 Sports Wrap. When a pregnant woman smokes crack, she's not the only one who's getting high. Long after her good time is over, the baby inside of her is experiencing a roller coaster ride through hell. That's because crack cuts off the flow of blood to the umbilical cord, making it almost impossible for oxygen and vital nutrients to reach the unborn child. If you're pregnant and using crack, stop and give your baby a chance. Welcome back to the show. Hanging out down here in downtown Minneapolis, catching the vibes, and uh, not much vibes going on with the rain. Uh, let's just hope that our sponsors don't find out where their cameras are out in this rain and everything. Well, anyways, let's jump into the scoreboard section. Topping scoreboard section news. If you've been watching fantasy baseball, well, we're going to do the same thing with fantasy football, except this time we're going to have a 14-team league, and two of the last teams are going to be filled by you, the viewers, so make sure you can send your postcards in. Drop us a postcard here at Metro Area Sports Wrap Fantasy Football. Attention, Metro Area Sports Wrap and care of Minneapolis Television Network, 125 Southeast Main Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55414. We'll be selecting two entries from the people in Minneapolis to fulfill those last two teams. So send those entries in as it's going to be a fun league that's going to be covered here on television. Hiawatha Fitness Center in, in South Minneapolis has announced their open house. It'll be taking place Wednesday, September 1st from 6 to 10 p.m. The open house will include new equipment, new renovations. Make sure you can try and check it out and see. I'll be down there catching the vibes, so stop on by Hiawatha Fitness Center. Just check it out in your local phone book. High school football fans, don't forget the Minneapolis City Previews. Tuesday, August 31st at Washburn High School. They'll have 15-minute running quarters, and they'll sneak preview all the talent and all the local football talent here in Minneapolis, so make sure you can try and check that out. Well, now it's time for the action-packed court scenes. This week, we've got a lot to show you, so we're going to jump right into it here in the scoreboard section as we get into court scenes this week. Court scenes, girls prep high school basketball to start out with the semifinal game. First bank versus Coca-Cola. Minneapolis is Coca-Cola in red. First bank in blue starting it out e early, rather. Smith as she takes the layup here. Watch the nice move to cut back and showing some good fundamental defense. But no good, doesn't matter. Smith scores anyways. Now, First Bank needed help in this one early as they go up and try to create some opportunities. No dice. Now watch. Good defense to hang in there. Boom, nice block by First Bank. They figure if they're going to do it, they got to do it on D. But nevertheless, they can't stop them. Ramcher going up strong, and she gets the, the bucket for two. Now, as we come down the floor, First Bank still in an attempt. Nice block by Huddleston. Sarah Huddleston. Hey, Hud. Nice job. Then, now watch the play develop. Smith, backside, all wide open. Coach Gear has got these team fired up. Now, first bank, trying to create something now. Smith, watch her take the length of the court. She'll drive all the way down for the easy deuce. 
Smith really exceptional and played well in this whole tournament and the summer game so far as she goes coast to coast. Now Lobeline, all their sisters a coach for another team. Nice, hangs in there. Then Coke on a roll and they're shutting down first bank. Just doing it easily as they make it the easy two. It was this type of game as Coca-Cola would roll on. Lobeline, nice dish, down low and the score now. In an attempt to come back, First Bank can't do it. Watch Lobeline go. It wasn't any joke. It was this lopsided. We did not pick highlights, just to pick highlights. This is how lopsided the game was. Smith scoring there. And now the final basket. Huddleston Hutt from South scores right there. Minneapolis being represented. And nice game as we go to the scoreboard. You see the final score, Coca-Cola 48, First Bank 24. Impressive game for Coca-Cola as they represent Minneapolis in the St. Paul City Conferences. Good job, Coca-Cola, showing the strength of the inner city. Court Scenes moves on to the boys' highlights. Now, somebody said I sound like the guy on CNN. I said, no way, but why can't we get a tip right today? Out of bounds. Minia, the big guy trying to tip. Now, right away, Northwestern. Here we go. In black, Carpenter starts out strong with the easy deuce. We've got Northwest representing Minneapolis in black. First Bank representing the late conference in blue. And Northwest wasting no time starting transition game early. As you see, Snotty gets the good, easy layup. Then the threes come to life for Minneapolis as they start to shoot like they have this whole summer long they've been shooting exceptional Minneapolis has looked really tough and that's the truth here as we see the threes being drained Peters from South says I can do this too yes Peters ranked 20th in scoring in the league by the way Ben Carpenter the pass many of the finish nice job if they do that this summer Washburn's rather this fall Washburn's gonna look impressive then first bank trying to keep them in there is Bryant with the pass to Dunn Dunn gets the easy basket but Northwestern was just too tough. Here, nice passing. Then Bryant. He tried to keep his team in this whole championship. He had audio problems, I guess. Then Bryant shooting outside, showing how strong he is. But watch Boone. Boone. Exceptional passer. He'll light it up. Boom, outside, subtles all night long again. That Washburn connection working beautifully there. Then, Boone, the nice pass to Patterson. Another Washburn connection. Patterson playing very good in this league. He's averaging himself. He's ranked in there. Down, Northwestern. Offensive average, 88.6. That's number one. Defensive average, 70.1. As we check the halftime scoreboard, that's third. They're just too strong. Patterson himself averaging 12.6 points in this league. Many a... The turnover takes it down the other end. Chris Rainey, Chris Rainey himself ranked in scoring, averaging 13.3 this summer, the guard from North. Then Bryant looking in. First Bank has a chance to try and get back in this one to put a run on. Minia tries to get the D, but Johnson, very tough. Johnson on his way to 30-plus points this evening. Then Snidey, the pass to Minia, and Minia does the kiss off the glass. No problem. Minia ranked third in scoring, 17.6 average from Washburn. He's looked impressive as well. Now, Rainey directing. And here comes Rainey. Look at the pass in. Now Carpenter, the feed. Many of the finish. Nice pass. The Washburn connection again. Beautiful job by Carpenter. Carpenter's really coming into his own. He played well as well. To put it honestly, all 12 players played well in this one. You see the basket there. First Bank just trying to keep themselves in it, but Northwest just too strong. First Bank Johnson, though, had a career game on his way to 30 points, but it just wasn't enough enough as he tried to keep him in it. Nevertheless, Minneapolis just too strong in this night. There you see Johnson. Nice shot by Johnson. He's somebody to watch out for, by the way. Woods, the drive. St. Louis Park, they'll be happy with him. But again, who could be more happier than Minneapolis? Minneapolis played well. They kept their composure through this whole summer and through this first game. And again, Carpenter showing his range there. Minneapolis, just so tough. Just so tough in this one. Many of the rebound sets up the break. Carpenter, watch him run it. The pass, showtime like this all night long for Minneapolis. No joke. Then, the other end, the player to watch, Lang, Henry. We watched him last year. He's maturing as a player this summer as well. He's really turned it up another notch. His fundamentals are starting to come together. Look at the left. Lang, 
He's going to be something impressive for McKissick to look at over at Henry this year. The city conference is really shaping up. It's really been great to watch a lot of these players develop this summer and see the improvements going on. There's going to be some exciting things happening this coming basketball season as well. And First Bank trying to keep in. Rainey up. Just textbook easy. Can't get any easier for Rainey. And he'll run the floor again to pass Minia Patton. Every game Minia has been in the highlight film. Minia dunking all over folks. Boom to the scoreboard we go. Northwest rolls. 101. First bank 68. No contest. Johnson 30. Rainey 15. Minia 14. Northwest takes a 1 0 lead in the series. Next week, both girls and boys will have the final game highlights, so make sure you tune in for that. Court scenes on. It moves to the men's pro am game. NBA. And for some reason, the tips just did not go right this evening. Ah, sloppy night, I guess, at the tip line. Anyways, into action. Summers, Craig Summers has played well for Target. Target and White McDonald's in yellow. McDonald's on a seven-game winning streak. Trent Tucker showed up for this one. He shows his range. Chicago Bulls player there. Then Chris Baker, the other end, from Idaho State, averaging 21.6. Then Coleman from North. Boom, all night long. Nice to see a lot of these ex-players from Minneapolis playing. Cookie Holmes, remember him from the 81-82 Gophers? The turnaround, nice, as Cookie averages 10 points in this league. Big game. Crowd was nice as well. Nice turnout. The biggest turnout they've had so far at the Pro-Am games. It was packed. It was warm, about 90 degrees. And they showed up to see a good game as you see Perkins cutting in. Then... Outside, Wolf on fire. The Gophers have looked hot. They've looked very good. Then Lingenfelter, nice give and go as he hooks up with Cartwright. Lingenfelter scores, trying to keep themselves in at McDonald's, but Target just had too much. Towns and Orr goes to town. The Gophers have looked excellent this summer, all of them who have played in this tournament. Then Tucker, just too strong. On they move. Then the Washburn star, Brian Carpenter, down at Northern Iowa. The moves, playing with the big boys, and he still scores. Then the nice Tucker, the Suggs, Suggs, Central, all night long. Suggs will throw it in. But Townsend Orr, the story here, unbelievable night again, averaging 20 points in this league, plays well. Chris Baker goes to town as he takes the jams, full force. And watch this one for all you fans of video. Yeah! Nice dunk by Baker showing his tenacity around the basket. But target on fire, unstoppable. You see here, watch Tucker, the touch, up, good. Target won't lose on this night, but nevertheless, watch Wolf from the University of Minnesota take Tucker to the hole and one. Nice play, but Coleman shows where it's at and what time it is. Don't fall asleep, McDonald's. You might not wake up. And showing there the strength. Target, 110, McDonald's 103, Tucker 30 points, Coleman 25, Baker 22, ends the McDonald's seven game winning streak, and the Gophers looked well in this tournament. Impressive. Court scenes, back to the show. Fantasy baseball. Well, the standings are now complete. The regular season is over as the playoffs will begin next week. So let's bring you up to date with how the final standings stand and how the teams ended up in the fantasy baseball regular season. In Division A, taking the division and advancing to the playoffs was K-Fan. They were in first place from the beginning, first game of the year. They end up with a record of 23 and 11 with a total of points of 917. Sergeant Preston comes in second at 21 and 13, two games behind, 924 total points. All Brett Company comes in third, 17-17, six games behind, going all for six the last six games, 818 points. Welly, 16 and 18, seven games behind, 851 points. In Division They win it, 821 total points. Super America, 16 and 18, 2.5 after sweeping Metro Area Sports Wrap and taking them out of it. They end up 2.5 games behind, 891 total points. Metro Area Sports Wrap, 12 and 21, six games behind. They go one and five in their final six games. Don't have a chance. They had a chance going into last week to make the playoffs. They don't capitalize on that. They end up six games behind with 768 total points. And Stremski, 11 and 23, 7.5 games back, 697 total points. Series results. Check out the series results here as we throw them up on the screen. 
as you see there, Metro Area Sports Wrap going one for five in their last six games highlights those series results. Well, on to the playoffs. This is how the playoffs will match up. The best of five series that begins this week, K-Fan versus Sergeant Preston's. And Super America will take on general managers fantasy baseball in the best of five advancing to the World Series. Well, that's it. As we go to the break, the scoreboard section, I'm getting rained on. You think this is funny? We're going to take a break. As we go to the break, check out the baseball players who are leading in their statistical categories here as we take it to the break. Stay tuned. You're watching Metro Area Sports Wrap. We'll be right back as we get out of this rain. Woo. Hello, I'm Lynette Woody. Basketball opened up a whole new world for me, and it can for you too. So if you have a chance to play, don't just sit there, jump at it. Jump, go my love, jump in and feel my touch. Burr, I'm cold. <laughs> I'm not lying, dude. I'm soaking wet. Hey, Northwest Airlines has been a heck of a team over there representing the Minneapolis City Conference in basketball. They've been playing in the Pro-Am Summer Games Fast Break League over at the Salvation Army in downtown St. Paul. Well, they've done a great job over there, and they have some things, as you saw earlier in, in the scoreboard section, they took first place in that big team tournament. Well, I met up with the head coach of them, and I talked with him, and that's the focus of this week's court wrap. Now standing here with Amil Jahed, the coach of this team, Northwest Airlines, an impressive victory tonight, 101-68. Elaborate a little bit about this team first. Well, our team, we have a lot of quickness, and uh, what I try and do with our kids each night is just push the ball ahead and just kind of exploit the team's, whatever the opposing team's weakness is. So like tonight, for example, uh, they were pretty much slower than us. So what I tried to do is just force the ball inside and move it up on a made field goal, you know. So uh, we did real good with it. I was real happy with the effort. What is it like to coach this to have all these players from the city conference together? Well, it's fun, obviously, because you get a chance to come out and win and uh, dominate teams. But the most part is, is that uh, just tearing down the stereotypes that Minneapolis kids don't play together and they're very selfish. So it's, it's, it's fun to win and it's fun to get out here and, and coach against other people. Talk a little about, bit about who the big guns are on this team and who's impressed you the most this summer. Uh, Rainey and Carpenter are real strong. Of course, we got Patterson and Mestas. Uh, to be fair, I would say all 12 guys. And we also have Khaled El Amin, who is not with us right now, who is very impressive, who is very young also. Okay, a little bit about yourself. You are a coach as well in the city conference. Uh, I'm the assistant coach at South High School right now. and. Uh, Right now, uh, I've been there two years, and I'm under Craig Lassour. Uh, we have an outstanding program there. Uh, this year coming up, we hope to do some damage in the city. Uh, last season, we tied for second with North and Washburn, so we've been uh, kind of looking forward to that battle again. What are you looking for as far as player personnel to step up this season for you at South? Well, we got four guys coming back uh, that were involved in our system this past season. Plus, uh, we have two transfers coming in, so we're looking to do some damage. Your experience at working with South and with the program at South and working with Coach LeSueur? Uh, like I said, I've been there two years. Uh, when we came in, we implemented a college-style uh, system, meaning that uh, we have three times a week study halls. We have a buddy system with our seniors and freshmen. We also have uh, mandatory group sessions, uh, kind of like a scroll session for the players on varsity. So we always meet before and after games, and we also uh, meet with the coaching staff all four levels. So we have uh, freshman coach, sophomore coach, and myself and Craig, the head coach that meets daily. So it's a pretty intense system. Bump, stick 
Diddy bong, stickity bong, hun. I got that up, put up, a pump, pump. But I can be by a bold diddly bum. Here I come, so feed a piper. I'm hyping up Pinocchio's nose, cause I'm a super califragilist, the tic tac pro. I gave a oopsie, lazy. Now you got the crazy. Crazy with the books, googly goo, where's the. Built-in natural mic stand. Hey, that's court rap. A good conversation. Northwest Airlines, Minneapolis City Conference is going to look impressive. Hey, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. You're watching Metro Area Sports Rap. Fantasy playoffs now beginning right around the corner. Fantasy baseball. K fan matching up against Sergeant Preston's and general managers of fantasy baseball, the book writers, going up against Super America. Well, it should be an intense playoffs as both teams are stacked and loaded. Both teams have controlled the divisions for the most part from the beginning. What separates these teams from each other? Who has the advantage? Well, that's the focus of fantasy baseball breakdown. Fantasy Baseball Breakdown. Well, let's start with Division A and Division 1. K-Fans record 23-11. They're a hot team to look out for. They're going to be going up, going up against Sergeant Preston's 21-13. Now, some things to look at. Well, K-Fans record, they've been 23-11. They've been in first place since the advent of the league in the beginning. They've been on top the whole time. They drafted first. They've done well. They've been on a current streak of 5-1. Now, their total points accumulator at 917 points. That leads the league as well. Last week's points, 30, 27, 17, 24, 38, and 25. So they have the possibilities of, on a regular basis, putting up top points. Now, K-Fan also slept its last series, 3-0, overall Brett Company. And knocking Preston's going into that weekend, they were vying for that number one spot. They knocked Preston's back to second place and drop them back two games. Now, when you take a look at K-Fan, you got to look at some of their big guns. Well, their big guns, Barry Bonds, just one of them, Tartable, Sierra, just to mention a couple, Sable, Pendleton, Ripken, Knobloch, McGuire, Fielder, their team is loaded with it. When you go into the pitching staff, it gets deeper as it goes. Johnson, Rio, Hanson, Aguilera relieving, Henry Russell. K-Fan's definitely got a good team. Their strength is that they have so many big guns. Check this, they have not made one roster change this whole league, but yet they've stayed in top 
in the top of the division and in first place the whole time. The weakness may be, though, the fact that they do not use their pitching staff and they do not make changes in their rosters as well. This could be an advantage to Sergeant Preston's if they can catch K fans sleeping. Well, when you look at Preston's, they're 21 and 13. They're two games back. They have total points of 824. They're currently on a streak of four and two. If you take a look at their last week, they put up 22, 20, 39, 29, 32, and 27 points. So they, too, have the possibility of putting up big numbers. Last weekend's Preston's went up against Welly Insurance Company. They took two out of three from Welly, so they're successful going into the playoffs. Their big guns are, well, one big pitcher McDowell, although McDowell, as of recently, hasn't been as sharp as he has. Paul Molitor is another big gun for them. Harper coming on as of recent. The Minnesota Twin they picked up. He has a 322 average. He's playing very well. And, of course, Juan Gonzalez is always going to put up the numbers and get the big runs for you there as well. Now, when you look at the strength of this team, probably is the intelligent managers. This is a team that was in last place with a couple weeks to go in the season and pulled themselves into the playoffs and took control. This team is on fire. Their managers may be able to get them through this series and win that if they can catch K fans sleeping. Their weakness may be, though, their lack of pitching staff in the middle. Their pitching, middle pitching staff is not as strong as it could be, possibly. Well, when you look at the next series in Division B, General Managers Fantasy Baseball versus Super America. Well, General Managers Fantasy Baseball, the writers of the book, they obviously drafted very well, drafting an eighth. They're 18, 15, and 1. Congratulations for being over 500, by the way. And with a total points of 821. Their current streak is 5 and 1. Last week they put up the numbers of 24, 40, 35, 18, 13 and 13. A little concerned about the last three numbers, 18, 13 and 13. Well, they have been slumping as of recently. General managers was up by many games, as many as four games going into the last two weeks of the season. They've dropped back a couple now. Now, last weekend they went two for three from Stremski, but again, Stremski's in last place. The big guns, the pitching staff, obviously Clemens. You have Clemens, although he is slumping right now, he can put on a big game for you. Swift, Cone, and then when you look at the infield, you've got players like Sandberg and Bagwell, who's been playing well recently. A strength, this is a good hitting team. This is a good point producing team. This team puts up the points. Maybe not the power, but they have the point. Their weakness then is the fact that they don't have the big home run hitters and the huge power. Well, as we look at the final team, Super America, look at their record of 16-18. They ended up 2.5 games back with 891 total points. They're on a streak of 5-1. and one. Super America has gone all over the division. They went from being on top of the division to the bottom, now back to second place to make the playoffs. Last week, they had a record 21, 26, 19, 37, 37, 18. But the Super America had 51 points. That's a season high. The most points put up so far earlier this season, so they can put up the big numbers. The last, the last series, take a look at this. How's this for clutch? They ended up having to go against Metro Area Sports. Rap who's backed by two games. They end up knocking them out and taking a three-game sweep. So, and again, digging down in clutch time as they knock them out. The big guns for this team, again, Burkett, pitching well for San Francisco. Now, when you look at the outfield, you've got players like Puckett. He's been hot recently. You look at the infield, you've got people like Sheffield. You've got people like Sosa, who's been turning it on as late. So this is a good, decent team. Their strength is the fact that they are a clutch team, and their managers and their deep starters and relievers are a key to this team. Their weakness may be, though, their middle pitching staff and the fact that a lot of their players will depend on being in streaks, and they are streaky, as we know with some of the players on their roster. So this is the Fantasy Conversation Breakdown as we prepare for the playoffs here on Metro Area Sports Wrap. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. Well, here you see I throw and make my wish. What was my wish? What could it be or what could it be? Tune in next week, maybe you'll find out. That's it for Metro Area Sports Wrap here. For the cast and crew Metro Area Sports Wrap, I'd like to remind you, if you have anything you'd like to submit to the scoreboard section, whatever it may be, don't hesitate to even drop us a line. You can drop that line to Metro Area Sports Wrap Productions in care of Minneapolis Television Network, 125 Southeast Main Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55414. And anything you send in, I guarantee we'll take a look at and try to respond to as soon as possible. If you have any ideas, tournaments, whatever it may be, leagues, don't hesitate to drop us a line. No matter what sporting event it may be, you will be surprised at what we may be on the scenes and covering. Well, that's about it for this week. So for the cast and crew, Metro Area Sports Wrap, for the cameraman, Brian Hesser, and for everybody else, I'm Ryan Young. 
Thank you. And make sure you're catching the vibes. And will everybody please, please say, we want warm weather. We want the sun. We're going to have about six months of winter coming up around the corner. We don't need to end the summer like this. Uh, forget about it. Be happy with the rain. I'm happy. It's summer. We're out of here. Tune in next week.